a very good Sunday afternoon, my people. And the weather is gorgeous outside. And um, after today's teaching, make sure we all uh, go out and take a walk. So last week, because of some internet problems, a lot of people couldn't really hear me. So today I'm just going to uh, not so much a repeat, but just kind of deliberate on what we talked about uh, from last week. And if you have any questions, and you just let us know. So now let's start with our part one breathing exercise. And this is based on longevity breathing exercise, Taoists. And they discovered that many thousands of years ago. Shoulder lines. as if you are hugging a tree. Close your eyes. Breathe in as deep as you can and out through your mouth, in through your nose. Relax your spine and also relax your dantian. We'll do our part two, our 10 energy movements. We'll do five movements each time. We're holding energy up from our Dantian Slowly pushing up, touch the sky, make a energy circle. We're doing this to strengthen our triple burner. Therefore, strengthen our fascia system our lymphatic system, This movement also is to open up the lungs and the colon, make the body fluid through, flow through the system.
the next movement. One hand touch the sky, the other the earth. Interchange in Tanjung. We are strengthening the whole gut system. Reduce the stagnation. Now, the next movement. We balance our basic emotions. Help with the spine inflammation. Neck inflammation, and upper body inflammation. Strengthen the heart system. Help with intestinal inflammation and stagnation. This movement, we're balancing the spine health. Kidney health, also bladder health.
This is for the liver health. The next movement, if you have kidney stone, prostate inflammation, bladder inflammation, uterus inflammation, do this. This really helps. The next two movements are the longevity movements and also that help to open up all the meridian lines to promote energy flow. And that will help to reduce overall stagnation. last the movements again open up your fascia system promote the body fluids run smoothly reduce inflammation and stagnation the last one is to bring everything all together you feel your toes are Blossoming like green flower. So today we're going to, again, just to talk more about bladder meridian line. Our bladder meridian line, so you see, we have went through 
every two hours, your body has a manager, right? So we won't go back that far from the beginning. Let's start now with the, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., your heart is the manager. That's the heart meridian line. So during these two hours, there's two times of within this 24 hours cycle that we say that heaven and earth have healthy intercourse. So one is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. This one is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So this two hours is we call Wu Shi. Wu Shi is the yang energy and yin energy begin again to interchange. So now the yang energy begin to flow down and the yin energy begin to flow up. So that during these two hours, that the most important thing is, you know, if you could have your lunch and if you can and take a little nap, or if you want to do exercise, and this is also a good time just to promote that, use that flow of energy. So, and then from one, right, um, to 3 p.m., and that is your small intestines. The small intestine really is to help body to sort out what is useful, what is not. So today we're going to talk about between three and five. Yes, between three and five p.m. So the bladder meridian line is our manager. So the bladder meridian line has one unique, is the longest meridian line of your body. It started right here, goes through your head, your spine, and go out of your bottom of your feet. So that's been said, why? Why is so important? The bladder meridian line is so important. What does the bladder meridian line do that help, it helps to hold or to control, to hold, to store first, to store body fluid, to hold, to flow, to let go. So this meridian line is on the back, you can see it's very next to the doom meridian line. This this two is this two meridian line right here. So this, what is it? This bladder line, when we were in our fetus, as fetus, that's the middle kidney line, right? That's the stem cell. That then the fruits, that two kidneys, when we're born, hopefully two, and that is the fruits of the middle kidney. So this help to store body fluid. So the body fluid is not just your urine, right? It's body fluid, it's the fluid, it's the fluid throughout the whole system. So help to store and to hold. You have to be upholded to have a flow and then to flow and then to release. There's the good, the, the good or the useful, the one that just circulate back and forth, and then the one that is, is no longer in use, and then we sweat out, right? And we spit out sometimes, and we urinate out. So that's been said is that several very basic concepts is that your body, why is so important for the body fluid to flow, right? We talk about 
when we talk about stagnation, we're talking about your energy gets stagnant. I remember we says each single one of us has more than three miles of meridian lines, like a large, very large of network of meridian lines. So when the meridian lines get stagnant, then that's called stagnation. Right? Inflammation is when we talk about our blood vessels. Our blood vessels that get inflamed, then that causes inflammation. So when we have toxins, what are we talking about? We're talking about the body fluid. The body fluid is either too strong or too weak. That causes a lot of toxins. So the toxins, stagnation, and inflammation together, what that create will create illnesses, right? So by keeping the body fluid flow smoothly, and then the other thing is body fluid is why it's so important in traditional Chinese medicine is because this has a lot to do with your lymph, right? That really is, you know, the body fluid is working together with the blood that have the blood flow. The body fluid working together with your lymph and with your fascia, the fascia are the walls of the system, right, of your body. They don't change, but you have doors and you have lines, you have wires, right? Think about our house and that fascia system, that the lymphatic system is where the body fluid will flow through that, right? So the body fluid, it doesn't really care if there is you know, blockage or not and trying to flow through. It is your triple burner, your lymph, to see, make sure that you don't have blockage there. So once you do, then you know you are unable to produce a good flow. Then people will, let's say, they feel, how comes I have um, dry mouth? Dry mouth is being treated as a part of the bladder imbalance. That means your bladder line, the energy is, is fake strong. It's not real genuine strong. It's really, it's too much. So that dry you up and you have dry mouth. And then if you have too weak, then you have leakage. Like people said, oh, they cannot control their urine. And then if they don't have holding energy there in the pelvic floor, then they have their bladder and they have their, their uh, uterus have this collapse of, of problems, right? We have, we treat people with that, right? And uh, so these are the things that we need to look for if we say, and then the other thing is when people have headaches, right? If it's, oh, I have this headaches just behind my head. And then that we know is your bladder has issues as well. Uh, and the other thing is that we also see when people have high blood pressure, if people have high cholesterol, and if people have too much, uh, have high level of inflammation, and then we also treat their bladder line to help to have a better flow of the body fluid to create, produce a healthier body fluid and to have better flow. So because body fluid has to be clear, have to really have this, it's like running water run through the system. When people have irregular cells, then the body fluid become, have damp heat in it, right? Become stagnant. That's what we call congealed body fluid, congealed blood that cause the problem. So what can you then simply do to help with the bladder system? Several things. So one is that we all have a meridian line, you know, petting tool now, and we just simply pat your back. Pat your back. Hitting your dual meridian line and you're hitting your bladder line. And then the other thing, what you can do is that don't hold your pee. Like I said, do not hold your pee. If you have to pee, 
go pee. And um, um, drink enough water. And when you do pee, that we said the best way is to squat pee. If you cannot do squatting, at least you do a sitting. With man and woman, we recommend the same thing. And then when you pee, you hold your teeth, bite your teeth. That will help to save the energy system from your energy, from your kidney system. And then the other thing that um, what we ask people to do is that if you work at home, sitting in front of the computer too long, and make sure how to help your bladder line is by sitting. And put your feet up. See, I'm forward, up, back. So every hour or two, and you do about 15, 20, or even five times, that will help. So all these things that will help you to strengthen your bladder line. And remember, between three and five, oh, and also this is one of the best time to hold your board meeting, to have a meeting, important meeting, because supposedly this two hours is your brain works really the top for you, the best for you. If you feel, oh, 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 oh then you know, well, you have your bladder line to answer. Um, I will leave room for questions. <clears throat> Dr. Lu, you mentioned uh, the term holding energy. Could you explain what you mean by that? Holding energy is that when you, our system, right, that they have, think about, they have this flow, right? And they're just there. It's not everything that is pinned on the wall. So what keep them where precisely where they are? Holding energy. You have to have the energy to hold. Holding energy is created by the heart, kidney, liver, and your digestion all together to create different side of holding energy in different part of the system. So the fascia separate, right? So the fascia system, you know, you have upper, middle, and lower gel, and each gel, each burner that separate your system because that supposedly, well, it's not supposedly, that will help to reduce infection. So only if your lymph, your body fluid, your eventually your blood system has problems, then people have spread, spreading of the problem, right? Like such as cancer. So when you come to our clinic, why am I in my design, a lot of my design is doing cupping. When you see you have blue, dark, reddish, dark, reddish marker, you know what system need to be cleaned. What has we help you to unplug those things? It's your bloodline, right? We are trimming a little bit of your dead blood vessels for you which can promote healthy blood flow. If you have blisters and you have those gooey little, you know, fluid in those blisters and you know your body has too much damp heat that has to come out, right? So how do we get it out? We are not able to get it out through acupuncture. The best way we could, but that take much longer. The best way to get it out quickly is through copy. So that's why we're doing copy. So next time when you see some blisters, you should rejoice. It's, ah, I get rid of some dumb heat. Good for me. 
So, but that's why we're doing that. That's why that's a part of the design. And that's why we're always cocking your back. So each single one of my design, nothing is random in there, right? There's a reason. So you create a better body from flow. Remember, that is one of the most important thing is to have that clear flow for you. That can drain your fascia system, that can, can run your fascia system, and that can really help the drainage of your lymph. Dr. Lu, we have a question about recurrent or frequent UTIs. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how something like that can become a chronic issue and also how antibiotics can contribute to maybe prolonging the issue from clearing and possibly recurring? So UTIs, and there are different reasons for UTIs, right? And with people, especially with women, that um, when they have uh, sexual intercourse and sometimes uh, they're allergic to you know, variety of things and uh, then that can cause UTI. And then the other is, is, is you have too much dampness in there and you have too much bacteria overgrowth or you have too much um, and uh, other things that can cause UTI. But once that occur, then the best way is to you know, change your diet and have some herbs and get some treatment so we can get rid of it. But real occurrence of UTI that, you know, the easiest way supposedly is to use antibiotics because that can get there supposedly quickly. But at the same time, that will be um, clean up too much of bacteria because that ideally it is there to clean up the bacteria, but it also clean up the bacteria in your large intestine and colon, which you need. So then that by helping one thing is, is, is unhelpful to the other. So then that people after antibiotics and they have constipation or they have running stool or they have you know, intestinal issues, that's really is, is, is why in the way it is helpful because it does help supposedly help to clean up quickly of the bacteria you have on there and reduce symptoms. And uh, but at the same time, it ruins the bacteria in your large intestines, which you will need that to have healthy bacteria group in your flora. So, but what you should be doing is when you do have that, is you do some self massage. We have pelvic floor self massage, and that will help to clear up UTI quickly for you. And also make sure that if, if you have sexual intercourse that cause UTI, then you will need to do certain herbal wash and you will need to do a variety of things that we can recommend that can reduce the chance of it. Uh, Dr. Lu, I'd like to go back to the notion of holding energy. You talked about how that can contribute to uh, some organs descending or possibly prolapsing. So is, could we then say that that's a function of, is it, could we say it's a function of aging that our holding energy decreases as we get older or are there ways to preserve that? Um, if women, have, especially women, if they have natural births or uh, sometimes if they have give birth and C-section that cut through the fascia here and that can damage the um, holding line, there's a very thin line. And then that, and then when people get older, when women going through menopause and they have less holding energy, everything is begin to feel more loose. So, but there are uh, exercise we can do to help people to have better holding energy. Because in the old times, we treat a lot of those cases, well, even today, we treat a lot of those cases that I think that I read somewhere, the research indicated is more than 50% of American women over age 50 have 
one one more more of either frequent generation or can't hold or some kind of holding problems. So it's very common and can be prevented to a degree and can be definitely treated. Dr. Liu, are there seasonal impacts that can uh, contribute to bladder health being either, uh, I don't want to say weaker, but uh, maybe contribute to more bladder health concerns? Are there seasonal yeah. effects to that? Summer is a season for people that have more UTIs. So because then uh, if people have a weak bladder system and then they don't sweat, right? Then your body is, then, you know, the toxins only through one organ and through your bladder and that itself can cause some UTI issues or other issues. Um, because summertime, people need to sweat, right? That's another thing is do not turn your air conditioner way kind of cool, right? Then your body will seize up inside and will try to release it outside. And then, and then you are doing this back and forth, back and forth in such a quick period of time, eventually your body will get confused. When your body is getting confused, then you will not able to sweat out. But sweating in summertime is one of the best way to get rid of toxins. So that's really, I encourage people to sweat daily in summertime, not uncontrolled sweat. Go out and walk a little bit and have this, just a little bit of sweat out. And that really is the best way to release toxins because when you sweat, it sweats throughout the system, right? And so that's the best way and cheapest way to detox. Uh, Dr. Lou, we have a question about the energy of the moon and the way it impacts body fluid. If you could tell us a little bit about that. Oh, that is a too large topic. <laughs> that is a too large topic. That's another topic for another day because that is, uh, it's, it's the whole yin. We have to go back to the whole yin system and see how the yin and yang interact. So to really follow the moon, the pattern of the moon. But that's a good question, which I'll have a topic just to talk about that. But certainly that interaction between us and the elements around us is really so profound. Yes. Yes. I think we should all know by now. Uh, Dr. Liu, you talked about making sure that the AC isn't on too strong. Is it then also, I would imagine, not or unhealthy to have temperature be too hot also? I mean, that's problematic in, in another direction. Right. It's a... Um, um, what is a really, there's no, oh, this is really good, but you feel comfortable inside and feel dry in a way. And because the AC really is one of the best thing to reduce dampness for you, right? And inside dampness. But uh, if you leave it not, nah, just a little bit degree less than what is outside. So you don't really feel, if you feel when you go out, you feel the shock. Oh, then you know your inside is too cool. Dr. Lu, what about things that induce a sweat in terms of promoting detoxification? So, so hot yoga, sauna, could you talk to us a little bit about how to regulate some of those therapies that so it's more moderate? So in summertime, that if you just go out and walk, that should do the trick for you. And if you say, look, I have a sauna at home, I want to use it, then use it twice a week and use it 10 minutes each time. And then that really get a total sweat out. So that is helpful, but definitely not every day because then you are losing too much fluid. If you are losing too much fluid, then you have less fluid inside, then actually you're not detoxing, right? You're creating more toxins inside. Think about that. There has to be a balance. 
because you are releasing not just the useless, but you are releasing the useful. We only produce that amount of body fluid. If it's all run out, then you will have problems like dry mouth, you will have problems, you will have GI imbalances, you, some of you may even experience some pain. That's just you let too much fluid out. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu. Uh, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, how some people feel sensitive to the temperatures outside and so it's impacting their uh, levels of physical activity. I know sometimes we talk about walking early or walking sort of as the weather cools down a little bit. Could you give us some ideas of how to continue getting outside but in a comfortable way? Well, you know, now in the morning is still quite pleasant. So then go out in the morning and walk a little bit and uh, just avoid maybe between 11 and uh, 4 this period of time is really hot and then walk after you've done work and um, just let yourself sweat out a little bit. And uh, we don't have to get a, either a sunburn or a, a, you know, a, that is too, too much, but definitely do not afraid of weather. If you are truly in balance with nature, your body will know how to regulate. A lot of monks that in winter time they regulate their temperature. They wear the same things in winter and summer, right? They never have heat inside, and in summertime, it's the 100 degrees out, and they work outside. They're just fine. Why? Because their body knows how to regulate with what is outside. But they also wise enough to avoid the direct sun, right? So then we get the best of it, but not direct hit. Think about the sailing, right? If you see the wind and you want to sail through the wind, you don't hit the wind, you're going to overflow. So the same way with how we deal with nature. Nature needs to be respected. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu. And always remember that in our clinic, Everything we do, there's a reason, right? I encourage people to ask, what are the reason I'm blistering? What are the reason I'm doing that? And why you put, you know, I come for pain. Why you put cupping? How comes I don't, you know, if I don't like it and what does that say? You know, just there's nothing in the design, nothing in nature, nothing in our design is random. There's a profound reason behind that. What you will need is simply to ask, right? Because what we do have is we do have this knowledge that we can guide you through. Okay, so until next time, my friends. Thank you, Dr. Lou and Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Lou. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank Lu. You so Thank much. you. Thank you, Dr. Du and Sarah. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lu. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Lu. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Lu. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Yeah.